Okay. Okay. Hello, world. Ein Tusch zum Start. A tusch to start from somewhere in the Gita Hall here in the middle of Superbooth 21. It's the second day and uh, I have the deep impression that today everything will run smoothly from the beginning until the end because we survived the rain yesterday. It was an unbelievable spectacle. The first Wednesday on a Super Booth and it started with very good weather and later in the afternoon uh, the rain came like really catastrophe showing us here you have it and I just read on our notebook here uh, buy the umbrellas to stop the rain promise that's what I uh, said to all the exhibitors yesterday and uh, in the end this has happened it rained like hell and we was spreading all the umbrellas to all the audience and they was all standing there and were in it has never been a better mood on Superbooth compared to yesterday evening and I'm quite sure that from now on we will have a dry event outdoors and we will have uh, an ongoing wonderful event indoors and this is the documentation of a live stream from 4 till 7 p.m. I hope you can all follow until the end and here we are with two people moderating helping you to understand what we're doing my name is Andreas Schneider of Superbooth It's the thing that I'm a bit out of understanding all these modules because it became so interesting and complex that I uh, took myself off and I'm more the one for the elderly gentleman to say hello. Hey, you're still in the business and one of these elderly gentlemen is already our first guest where we will end up uh, in about two minutes and we're very much looking forward to talk to this gentleman inside this event because he never was in Berlin but he's well known from us for I don't know 12 15 years already because we also were to the United States and it's a worldwide community of synth builders that are getting together on Superbooth Berlin here so um, we welcome Mr. Eric Barber quite soon and then the program will go on with uh, 4.25 roundabout. That's the first Gesprächskonzert from the Hütte. That's who? Once again? Ach so, ah, ja, my friend Urs Heckmann. It's the first presentation of a software. Heckmann is a Berlin-based software company. They will perform at 4.25 and at a quarter to five we will go over to Vietnam where we welcome our uh, new friend Q Analog who in between is not anymore in Vietnam but we have another friend in Vietnam so we, we will have a conference with one guy in Vietnam telling us about the situation over there with hard lockdown and uh, his buddy from Vietnam who is now in Montreal producing modules and then we will have the VIP block uh, with um, the interview with Hacke de Picciotto, Hacke from Neubauten and de Picciotto uh, have has been playing in, uh, uh, will be playing tonight on the seaside stage and then we will go on with, with Martin Foss, Reinhold Heil and in the end Jean-Michel Jarre. But now we will come to the first thing over there. Metasonics and therefore we will go into the auditorium. Thank you. Leute?
Of. I think he is uh, probably he doesn't like flying or he's shy to leave America or he missed to get a passport. That's all possible with Americans who understand um, their country very well. I don't know him uh, so much that I know. Did you talk to him about such why he doesn't come to Europe? Yeah, uh, no, I don't know no, why he's not, not come. <clears throat> So um, uh, we're, we're still waiting for to start the stream. He's uh, not yet online. Hello, Eric. Can you hear us? Uh, worst case, uh, we will have a file that we have prepared for these unexpected cases. But I still have hope that he will pick up the phone, wake up. You know, you have to imagine now in America, it's nine hours back, so seven in the morning and uh, I was expecting him in a pyjama saying oh or something <laughs> welcoming super booth I have no idea so um, he prepared something he said and they double checked the connection several times as we did and I can use the time to give you a little report about yesterday uh, yesterday was the first day of super booth and my personal impression was that uh, <coughs> um, that there was um, still perfect mood. Plenty of people said this is already the best super booth ever this year, even uh, in the rain and after the rain, <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, because it's such a good feeling to be outdoors and also to be in the middle of the trees and the yeah, green. Yeah, absolutely. It's, Plenty it's, of people it's, was. It's a perfect yeah. atmosphere and uh, it's it's nice to have the stream though but uh, I can recommend to come here. It's the best place to be in this moment. So uh, this morning I, I met so many people I, I haven't seen for about two years. Uh, it's, it's the situation, you know, um, and well, it's great to be here. And in the evening when Jan Thiersen was playing his live set, it started to rain like hard rain and then we spread all the umbrellas and everybody was ready to go in the rain to another concert in the park in the dark side and <coughs> that was really perfect but what i learned from this that perhaps the wednesday is uh, not the perfect day for super booth and if we will make the super booth in may again we will skip the Wednesday again and start on Thursday because it's all easier with Thursday, Friday, Saturday compared to four days as we have it right now. Not just for us, but also for inventors. And on the Wednesday, the weather was not fine, but now we will have three wonderful dry days, as promised. So... Yes, Eric. Uh, what we could do is we start the file now that Eric has uh, prepared and then we will see if we get him online to start the conversation. Is that fine? Yeah. Wonderful. So here you see Eric Barber in uh, New Mexico.
Cool. Thank you very much, Eric Barber. And so this was a file Eric Barber has sent us in advance to now talk about Metasonic's products and their meaning and their quality and the specialty that Eric Barber is so long in business, but he has never visited our trade show over here. What is in the end a good choice because we don't have to fly around so much and we have to interrupt with this style of international forwards backwards. But in the end it's good to know each other because that's why we like each other. And um, it looks like he's not able to start his Zoom thing for what kind of reason ever. But we just had a wonderful conversation about Metasonic's products with um, my dear friend Henning Schoenvogel, who once said, um, who once made a, a sound library with just Metasonic's products with some partners, and he was forwards, backwards, very in team working with Metasonics, and I'm very happy that he said, yes, it's fine, and I would like to ask you to come on stage and to talk with us about Eric Barber and Metasonics products for the time and about this video that we have just seen, because unfortunately we can't get Eric online. Is that okay with you, Henning? Thank you. So this is Henning Schoenvogel. Thank you very Great. much. And because we're working with each other so in team, I would like to let you have my microphone. I think that's okay. And we share the microphone. And give Hello. Hi. Hi, Henning. Hi. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you the... Um, the modules and the sound of, of uh, the Metasonics uh, synthesizer th that we just saw, uh, I'm always intrigued by by the this this um, kind of it's is it lo-fi or is it uh, something else? Um, well, um, Eric uses a lot of tubes which are not really meant for for generating or processing audio material. Um, back. Uh, when we did our sample library, and uh, yeah, there was a time where the Metasonics Wretch machine was uh, available, mm. big fat tube synthesizer, uh, two oscillators, wave shaper circuit. Um, oh, Eric wow. is go there? Ahead. Go hey, ahead, please. Him talk, let him go ahead, talking. <laughs> that was interesting. Can you hear me? 
Hi, Eric. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can hear you. It's a miracle. <laughs> 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 I've, used, I've used this camera before to do streaming through Zoom and other things, and it's worked before, but I don't know. Anyway. But you're there. I'm here. <laughs> hello. So what would you... <laughs> hello, what would you like to ask? We used the time to watch your film. Thank you very much. Was that a new product that you have been showing us? Yes, it is. And that's it's going to uh, be the very present. Expensive. That's the present or the future. I've I'm trying to build another one right now. I've got one prototype finished. It's proving to be difficult. Why? Well, it's got three thyrotron VCOs, and in order to do that, you have to have three thyrotrons that more or less match and will track together. In order to do that, you have to hand test dozens of them. And do you do that experimental or by measuring? To find three. The only, three the only of way the to do this, the only way to do it, is to plug each one of them in and sweep them with a control voltage until you find, th and write it down, and then go through the routine until you find three of them that work. So do or I assume, co close. sorry, do I assume correctly that uh, the oscillators uh, in the T1 are, are more or less like uh, the RK7? Yeah, it's just, a, it's basically a bunch of modified RK modules. Okay. So filter There's and so on as well. Yeah, it's it's an, it's three RK sevens, an RK three, an RK four, an RK six, and then a a VCA with an envelope generator. Sounds good. But Sounds it's good. Got, it's got a very complicated control circuit with a a keyboard. It's tunable keys and a ribbon controller, and a pressure controller, and an eight event sequencer. A few years Are you back, my oh, sorry, please Are you go on. My video? <laughs> Are you getting my video? Are you getting my video? No, I don't know. Sorry, we didn't get that. You're not getting my video. <laughs> yes, we got your video, yeah. It's there. Okay. Well, then I'll turn the camera on the thing. Aha. There it is. The machine. Next level Metasonics. From New Mexico. Am I right? Originally, yeah. Handmade in California. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Not made in China. And no, am I right that you are in the middle of a forest, living and uh, in danger of burning down the house? Yes, sir. There's a fire going on uh, just 20 miles away from me right now that started up on Sunday. The Hopkins fire destroyed about 200 homes. And I think they're going to have it under control today, but it's it's really bad. They, this is the worst... Um, drought in cal in recorded history right now all of the all of the uh, reservoirs and lakes are almost dried out the rivers are almost dried out it's so bad that some some towns are running out of water they have to bring truckloads of water in so as a result there our our wonderful um, sheriff is telling people, be ready to run. You've got five minutes notice. We don't know. If, it, if a fire starts nearby, it could destroy your house in five minutes. So be ready to run for your life. We can't protect you. So that's what it's been like this year. And we are just talking about tubes and synthesizers. <laughs> yeah, well... No, I have this to is make this stuff. 
and I c it's very hard to make this stuff when every when all your parts and materials are packed up waiting for the fire to come over the hill so that's not good no that's definitely an intense situation but in very the end is this the thing i wanted to talk about about the situation in the world where friends of us like you uh, living in the United States under totally different circumstances compared to those where we are in, in the holy Berlin here, sitting in our uh, luxury and uh, safety, on the safety first edition, <laughs> as we called it here. And uh, I wanted to make this visible, where all these synth nerds are coming from. So this was a very nice um, explanation of where you live. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. I could go on and on about that. It's other things are happening that you don't know about that just caused great problems. So it's it's been an ordeal. This whole summer has been a really unpleasant ordeal. And I've still got orders. I've, I still owe you an order, in fact. No, well, I, let's go for I the new sin for now, I guess. <laughs> yes. Hey, Eric, I why, why didn't, uh, did you, even in, be in better times, you never came to Europe, does that have a, a certain reason or did that happen by accident? Money. Money. It's, okay. Yes, it's, my business has been slowly declining for years. I don't even go to the NAM show anymore. Okay. And that's just a matter of driving down the freeway. But... Um, You've been very successful with your products for a while with, with all these illustrations and with these web names from Bot Probe till I don't know. And, um, but you skipped that, you wanted, you made that, you, d you, don't, you didn't go on with that. I uh, think that's the right position, but um, you was uh, something like the Enfant Terrible in the synthesizer world with all these tubes and these uh, web declarations and names. Did you skip that with a... Uh, because you wanted to get rid of it and you wanted to get back to serious or was that just an accident? I had to, we had to get serious. As much as Dave Lovelace's cartoons are, are hilarious and outrageous, I became famous for the stupid cartoons and not for what they did, the product did. And, you know, that's, that's not good long term. But yeah. uh, we stopped doing the, the cartoons and... Then sales started to slide. You have to get people's attention. And I, I could never figure out how, other than doing something stupid and outrageous and being famous for being stupid and outrageous, you know, I could not figure out what I had to do. But COVID has been great for my business. In the past year, it has, it has doubled, literally. And I haven't done any advertising or anything to speak of. I have not been to a trade show in a couple of years, well, not since 2016, in fact, <coughs> because I was so short on money. We were just barely getting by. This year has been great. I'm going to have a huge tax bill next year, in fact. While but we are uh, at uh, outrageous, I still love uh, the safety warnings from my wretch machines manual. I will not quote them here, but uh, they're good. <laughs> so there's I a few so. fans of this and that but uh, I can fully understand if you get back to be a bit more serious even uh, if the world is, uh, is getting so more complicated and dangerous as it does these days and I think um, we have to say thank you for uh, your introduction and we're very much looking forward to get one or five or ten or whatever number of products that you make over to Europe to um, see them, feel them, and hear them. The uh, introduction was quite nice. Thank you for doing it. And we will try our best to one day have enough money to say, hey, here, here's the, your, your ticket for the ship. Come over for Superbooth for a month in uh, 20, I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, but we will let you know. And uh, for now, we can only ask you to please uh, send the... Uh, problems you have and uh, stay alive for future meetings here or there. We will try to make it even better next time. Thank you very much from me. Okay.
Yeah, and we switch over to the next Gesprächskonzert, which is Urs Heckmann, Yuhi. From hardware to software. To software, yes, and uh, no, actually not. Okay, great. I of course, he's famous for, for the software, for lots of software synthesizers, but he is playing a live set with uh, Civilization and a very new uh, module he's um, planning. It's wiretap, this uh, two-channel trigger gate and uh, CV slope analyzer. This is very interesting. And what Eric Barber is in the world of uh, tube modulars, I would say from my point of view, and I'm quite ignorant, Urs Heckmann <laughs> is the punk in the world of software synthesizers. So let's enjoy this next movie. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you.
Okay, that was Heckman, you a he, you he. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to pronounce. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Urs Heckmann. And by the way, Urs Heckmann was the first software company. Uh, it was just Urs Heckmann that was asking me, hey, you're going to the Super Bowl. Uh, no, you're going to the Musikmesse Frankfurt. That's 12 years ago. And uh, I'm going, I want to I wanna go there. I have my, I booked my first exhibition stand with uh, six square meters in Frankfurt. And I didn't welcome him in the Super Bowl thing because it was a software company. <laughs> but he was asking me then to... Uh, transport his uh, table in our van because he didn't have a van. So uh, I invited him, okay, then we drive the van. So I was driving <laughs> with Urs Heckmann with a van to Frankfurt Musikmesse years ago when he was just starting his company. So yeah, and we he's are somehow still married with that. He's doing the board. coolest software instruments and also modules like his new civilization uh, matrix mixer. And now there's a new thing coming, Varitap. I think he was he was playing the set with it. Yes. And there's Kwan. Hey, there's already Mr. Kwan. We can't hear you yet. Uh, we're probably waiting for Frank. Uh, this is already the next topic because we're now swapping from Berlin uh, after having been to uh, US, the USA with um, Eric Barber of Metasonics. We're now going further to Vietnam. And um, wow. Uh, to the Vietnamese origin based um, uh, Mr. Kuan in Montreal. But he's still preparing. Hello, we can see you, but we cannot hear you yet. So there, perhaps your microphone is off. Um, yes, let me check it quickly. Well, very good. Now oh. we can hear you. Oh, yes. So, welcome Everyone. to the Super Booth. First of all, I would like to show you where you are. We're a bit early. Uh, this is the monitor where we see you. We're sitting on stage Hello, in a wonderful auditorium. I just take you around where we have the virtual meetings. This is the audience. Uh, it could be that it's dark from your side, but that's OK. And um, this is, again, uh, the place we see you. And I get back to us. and. So uh, this is my friend Jörg Sunderkötter helping me to moderate ah. our meeting. Hi, Kwan. We just emailed. And oh, yes. Yeah, we just met on email just before, yes. He it briefly really introduced... Nice to meet you guys. Ah, yeah. Nice to meet you. And uh, he just briefly uh, inf inf informed me about some new modules he made. Um, there is a nice stuff coming. Oh, yes. Like it is like all the whole pandemic time actually it gives me like enough time. To Sorry, Kuan, can we have Kuan a little bit louder on the stage? Please. So, so yes, uh, yeah, sorry. So let me introduce myself. So I'm Kuan, I'm from Vietnam and now I'm just moved to uh, Montreal, Canada for three years. And yeah, I'm a founder of Quantalog Instrument. So here, uh, you can see, like, uh, I have my phone set up a modular here, so which is, I have, like, some of my new modules coming up, like, as well as some of that, like, already releasing one. I'm excited to yeah, show it to you guys, like, in a minute. <laughs> Great. And, uh, yes, we, I know the, um, the modules, like, Boo Boo is, is a five-voice drum synth, and factory, we all know, it's a, a synth backbone uh, uh, module. What, what is a backbone module? So the whole idea behind this is like whenever I plug in my system, I always have a need of like mixing the signal like together before going to a filter. And then with every filter, like you, you would need kind of a, you know, envelope or in this case, like function generator. So I always have to use those modules together. So I think like, oh, why not putting all of them together in one small module so it can be used as like kind of a final sound uh, processor for like in this case, like I have the drum sign here and I have the scene sign here. So it like producing like make like every sound source you have like into a 
kind of a drum boys or scene boys that easily. And the uh, the factory is uh, based on um, a Steiner Parker filter. What is so um, interesting with this kind of uh, filter design for for um, for this uh, five channel system? So from the beginning, I was have a test out with like you know trying to clone the MOOC ladder filter, which is sounds really good. But what happened is I need like a band pass and a high pass filter as well. And which is like on the uh, direct ladder filter, I find that it's like uh, really helpful and more stable than you know the direct ladder filter when you have to kind of matching the resist uh, the transistor all the time. So, uh, uh, so in this uh, design, I'm choosing to have like the, the three three uh, filter mode on the uh, factory here, so it a variable filter. Uh, a setup so you can hear that now I'm using the band pass for the drum and it will modulate by uh, the function uh, generator on board as well so Guan, you have planned to play a performance on this for us in Berlin, so you will be playing a performance, but I also wanted to talk to you about <clears throat> your uh, Vietnamese origin. So you grew up in Vietnam <coughs> and you now moved to Montreal in Canada to realize your vision of making modules. But I wanted also to have a statement uh, from you about what's going on with electronic music in Vietnam. That's why I also invited my old friend and my schoolmate, uh, Frank, Dr. Phil Frank. But uh, one question to Benone is he, did you get, try to get him? Elvis in Saigon? He's not on the stream? Uh oh. And um, yeah, perhaps it didn't work out, but anyway, so uh, I think your impression of what's going on in Vietnam is uh, also quite competent because you, when did you move to Montreal and what's your impression of electronic music in Vietnam would be my question. Oh, that would be an interesting question because of, I grew up in Vietnam and like living there for the whole time of my life for like the first 28 year. And I just moved here for like three years now. So it would be really interesting for me to see the differences of, you know, the music scene in general and the election in, in this specific. So I was like starting my music as like, you know, a, like a guitarist for a rock band, like, you know, playing metal and stuff like back in the day. But like finally I'm changing my direction and went into electronic music like trying to make like experimental and techno music, something like that. And I end up like finding modular as like a useful tool for it. But what I see for the electronic scenes in Vietnam, it's like, it's like or it, in Asia in general, it's like we are in the very interesting time of development when, you know, the scenes is kind of going up really fast in a way. I, yeah, cause when I first start, to kind of come into the scene, like it's not really that much happened going on. Uh, there is club and bar, but mostly for uh, expat people or for, for foreigner people that living in Vietnam or, you know, like people who travel. And then also, you know, the Vietnamese side, they have their own club and stuff as well, but those two are not really linked or have any connected like together. Yeah, but then what happened is the more and more I'm into the scene, the more and more I'm starting to see the thing like Vietnamese people, you know, young people start to involve in and go into some, you know, new place that normally only by expat people, like mm -hmm. uh, they go in there. So it's starting to mix up together. And then, uh, you know, the two were Vietnamese side and the uh, like foreigner people uh, who live in Vietnam, it's, like starting to getting more interesting lately. 
and also like we have more international act like, coming from outside, like from Berlin, because uh, I used to work for a club called Savage, so we have a lot of uh, DJ come from Berlin, come uh, to play for or from around the world. So it it's getting like much better like in the past five years or so. Great. Thank you very much for all this uh, information. And I would say, I don't know, I didn't look to my watch and I don't follow the time anymore. <laughs> but uh, perhaps if you don't have any more questions. No, I'm, I'm just excited about the new complex oscillator to hear. Please, please let us hear your performance. Wonderful. Oh, that would be great. Thank you so much. So before I'm diving to the performance, I just want to show you like how it layer, how it sound and everything. Yeah. So it's more clear later. So here are the sound uh, complex video. With the factory, like with the factory as a filter. And now we have more FM modulation. Thank you. 
Awesome. This was Mr. Juan from Guanalo from Montreal in Canada. Thank you very much for doing that. That was very nice and had a totally different aesthetic. Uh, so. <laughs> Sorry, you want me to repeat that? Juan, you didn't hear it because I didn't use the microphone. I'm sorry, but I said uh, thank you very much, and we gave you a little applause. And um, this was Kuan from Kuana Lok from Montreal, and uh, you are um, you have moved to Viet to, to Montreal from Vietnam, and because you are Vietnamese, and I am so interested in what's going on in Far East in general. I also invited another friend to join. That's my old uh, schoolmate, uh, Frank. I don't know if you have a connection. Sounds like negative. So, yes? He's coming in, so we will have a s short chat with uh, my friend Frank. I don't know if you had that already, Kuan. I can't hear you. You have to turn on the microphone, Kuan. Hey, Frank, can you hear us? Hello, okay. Frank. I can hear Kuan. I see Frank. <laughs> yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Hey, da oh, bist perfect. du. Uh, what time is it in Vietnam? It's about, it's exactly 10 o'clock in the night. Okay, so uh, early, uh, late afternoon from our point of view. <laughs> yeah, very late afternoon, but can you hear me clearly? So this is uh, Dr. Phil Frank from Saigon, and we have been uh, in the same class in school, and uh, Frank, <laughs> alias uh, my dear friend Elvis, as we called him all his life, and as he wap, still wap, has... Loom, wap, wap, bam, boom. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's living in Saigon, and the funny thing is that we was talking about what's going on in Far East. Is there electronic music in Saigon? And are there people um, I found from a recommendation mm. over here, over uh, one of our staff members, that there's Kuan who's coming from Saigon. And then yes, I tried to introduce exactly. you to each other. And Kuan said, hey, I know this guy because he read your um, Vietnamese name. And he said, I know this guy. He's a prominent guy in Vietnam. Kuan, is that right? Yeah, yeah that, uh, that yes. is right. I'm, I'm very well known in Vietnam. Uh, everybody knows me. All the mu musicians and technicians, they know me. I'm a technician too, so of course I know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi. Thank you. So I, um, I, I'm, I'm sitting a little bit in a mist, I can see from uh, whatever. We don't care about that. You, you know, um, uh, we just wanted to know about what's going on in Vietnam, in Saigon, in Ho Chi Minh Stadt. I'm sorry, um, currently uh, with the COVID and the situation and your view to German in short, I don't know. Well, uh, the music scene moves on. That's the first thing. That's a good thing. Um, but uh, since the Corona crisis is still very heavy uh, landing on Vietnam, um, there are a lot of restrictions to move around within the city. That is a big, big problem, you know. You still have that 1.5 kilometer maximum to go out of the house to just yeah, eat food it, and drink? It, I just got restricted again. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay, so it's getting worse. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say it's worse, but uh, it's not getting better. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I thought it's good to understand where we are connected. And um, yes, um, there's probably in your horizon, there's more traditional music or there's also more people popping up in uh, your friends shops with uh, interest for electronic music. Or is that just a B theme in Vietnam? Have you an opinion well, on that? Uh, Vietnam is always uh, 
half-half, you know, young people still like traditional music, still like Chin Gom Sun and Mutu uh, Mian and uh, the older ones, you know, and but the, at the same time, young people are striving for more modern type of music at the same time. It's it, it, it's ambiguous. It's it's it, it always happens at the same time, you know, and um, as far as I can see from my recording studios, which are around the corner, there are two recording studios around the corner too. And the musicians there, are, I wrote you already about that, and um, uh, they they are ambitious, I might say, and they want new sounds and they want to create new sounds and uh, they are waiting for everything to be opened up again um, so that people can really meet but well, of course i can meet them because i can just walk over but uh, people also have to make money right yeah, yeah. somehow they, ca they cannot just <laughs> move to new equipment and then record and then there is no 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 market we we that, did not that, we did not understand yet that money that we can't eat the money, but uh, this yeah. is the next step then. Um, that, that, that is the next step. But but anyhow, th what, what I want to say is, uh, they want to use the studio facilities, but at the moment they are currently shut down, locked down. Better English. Uh, that's a big problem, a big headache for me. But, we had, uh, we had I, a lot of people here I, becoming. I, I can still, I can still talk to the people. You know, I can still meet them outside in the park or something. Uh, <laughs> I can do everything I want. But uh, uh, I think we should uh, still. Uh, it takes some time for here to things to calm down. I think. Yeah. I don't know what what you else, uh, Mr. Gun, also has to say. Uh, I think in Montreal, the situation like exactly like this for the past year and we, you know, lockdown opened up again and lockdown again a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. N now, finally, I think it's getting better when I think because mostly like because like everyone is getting like two dose of vaccination here. So now they open up, but with the vaccine passport. So I think it's kind of safer like a bit yeah. than before. That, that's the same thing here in Vietnam. I mean, I got my first vaccination in two weeks. I got my second one. The whole, uh, um, what we call Gun Bai, uh, D7 in English, uh, will be vaccinated to approximately 80 to 90 percent. Okay. Well, that's a good, good sign. That was a great little short impression from Vietnam from my dear friend, uh, Dr. Phil Frank Gerke, alias Elvis, who uh, I normally would like to invite to sing us a good song from, I don't know, Elton John or Elvis Presley or whatever, but Frank, stop over. We have to interrupt because we're in the middle yeah, of I, I swapping over guitar, to the yeah. next theme. <laughs> 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 so let's... <laughs> Let's say we are prepared and with the next Super Booth, we will come back to this theme. Thank you for joining us also to Mr. Kuan from Kuan Alok from Montreal today. And uh, this was it. And we will go on with a few impressions of the Super Booth outdoors to go on in our program. Thank you very much and good night, Frank. And uh, have shall a good I leave day. now or can I see that? Uh, just uh, the online stream on www.superbooth.com, embed it, and yeah. there's a picture, and then you start the stream, and then you can follow the rest of the event. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Yeah, we, we keep in touch, and uh, we go on, I think. We yeah. go on. Life goes on. It can't get worse. Let's make it better. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Bye yeah. Bye. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye to every have a, have, a, have a nice day. And, yes, uh, we will Bowl. do. Yeah, have a nice day too. Thank yeah. you so much for having me for the conference. Yeah, yeah, you're great, everybody. All right. It's been a huge pleasure for me to be here today. So thank you so much, everyone.
Thank you, Kuan. We will see us next time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andrea. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Hi, Daniel de Picciotto, Alexander Hacker. Welcome to Peter Booth. Thank you. <laughs> and on behalf of the Miller Theatre Foundation, we we'll thank you for participating in our second anniversary event with your performance tonight. We feel very excited about it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. You both have very deep and rich artistic history musically and many other things i think if i was to list them all it would take way beyond our seven minutes that we've time allotted uh, but just so d for people who don't know danielle is a visual artist a musician um a filmmaker co-founder of love parade alexander long-term member of einstieg and neubauten many other projects musical projects and collaborations just so you know, we've got two amazing people here. <laughs> um, so in the time we have, I think maybe we should maybe talk about the present and the future. Um, you have a new album coming out shortly. Maybe you want to tell us a little bit, a little bit about that.
Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, we've got Andreas Schneider here. He's on air constantly. Um, okay, so was it switched off? Hello. Is it working now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Take twenty-four. All right. I've been asked to come again, not sexually. <laughs> um, the new album by Hacker de Picciotto is going to be released on Mute Records on the twelfth of November of this year, and um, it's great. And um, tonight we are going to perform two of its tracks on the Seebühne out there at half past seven. <laughs> good, very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hooray. <laughs> Maybe you can t uh, talk a little bit about the process of making the record and where you did it and how you did it and the instrumentation. And well, usually um, we're on tour because we've been nomads for the last 10 years, but this record we actually produced in Berlin, which was nice because we weren't jet lagged, we weren't exhausted, we could concentrate in the music. And so we could also bring more things into the studio than usual because we didn't really have to reduce ourselves to two suitcases. So that was really nice. Yeah, so this, this record has actual live drums and uh, is utilizing um, you know, a studio as, uh, as such. Before we would work with like a guerrilla warfare uh, carry-on equipment, everything that will go through the security check of an airplane, and this time we could actually use like proper microphone preamps and proper microphones even, and yeah. you know, and and all that, all that kind of stuff, and that was that was great. Yeah. And you you have a studio here in Berlin. Yeah. Yes, yes we have our own little studio. Yeah, that's yes. Right. <laughs> And um, I know, uh, Alex, I know that you're a bit of a Kurg fanatic. Oh, the Kurg, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the Murg, I am a Kurg uh, fanatic, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I it was my uh, second um, electronic uh, or electric musical instrument after the electric guitar was actually a Korg MS-20 synthesizer. And uh, I got my first patching lessons for that synthesizer by the late great Chris Lo Haas, and uh, and that kind of well meeting Chris Lo Haas of uh, Deutsch Amerikanische Freundschaft and Liaison Dangerous fame completely uh, changed my life, obviously. But then also his expertise in working with synthesizers mm. was very very influential to me, mm. and uh, you know, and you know just understanding the concept of a envelope. Uh, you know, curve and stuff like that, you know, makes you, it, it teaches you something philosophically, too, I think. Yeah, and you're still working with that instrument today? Yes, I uh, still have uh, a MS-20 in, in the studio, not the original one that my mom bought me in 1979, because actually Chris Lowe buried that somewhere in Grunewald. At one point, uh, he decided to uh, bury all uh, his stuff, and unfortunately, my synthesizer was among those things. <laughs> but um, I got a, a FM Einheit. Uh, Mufti gave me his when he really got into Depfer synthesizers oh and, okay. uh, <laughs> and you know, didn't need the cork anymore. <laughs> and what, 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 so how do you, sort of on from making it through the making of the album, how do you sort of divide who, who plays what and who? Well, we, you know, that's kind of how our music 
came to be because at the beginning when we started doing music together we were kind of like trying to do everything and then we realized the best way to do it is if when each one of us does that which one can do best yeah. and because we come from very different directions mm. um, I basically play like the instruments because I have a classic education okay. and um, I love writing so I write the lyrics mainly mm. And um, I'm I write the melodies, and Alex loves. I like things that are like a little finer, and Alex likes things that are really loud. Like we're basically complete opposites. Okay. And so Alex can do the really really loud stuff, and he plays bass, and he does the whole percussion stuff, and all the rhythm. And so basically, we kind of concentrate on that. And then once in a while, one of us ha feels like doing something that is untypical, and then we do that. So it's. Um, it kind of falls into place like that on its own. It's interesting. We worked a long time to find that. Yeah. And of course, this is not your, by any means, your first album together. You've made many albums in over the years. When did you When did you actually start working together? In 2001. Okay. Yeah. Right. At the beginning, it was mainly, we did mainly um, audio-visual projects. Mm -hmm. And um, you did a, a chorus project, too, at the very beginning, right? Yes, I did a thing, Hacker on Cork, where I would just, uh, you know, uh, play play the Cork synthesizer and talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I was very drunk most of the time. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so you, um, so this is Super Booth, um, but you haven't really uh, engaged yet with um, Eurorack or Modular. Um, I have um, deliberately stayed away from Eurorack Modular for um, the time being because I am um, a addictive personality, <laughs> uh, for one, <laughs> and uh, and I know that once I would get into it, that's basically where my money would go. That would be the vain <laughs> and uh, so you know like I stay away from it a little bit a little while longer I suppose yeah. I can hardly contain myself <laughs> and then also the other thing is that you know like all the stuff that I use the tools you know like I they kind of I work with them uh, very um, very effectively let's put it that way and yeah. and uh, I re remember the days maybe when people work with Max MSP and like a program language like that mm. Most of the people I knew who worked with that program language stopped releasing music altogether because mm -hmm. they were patching. And um, you know, and I I would like to. In fact, I have to continue to release music because I have to make a living somehow. Mm -hmm. And I think um, you know, getting into modular would also be a bit of an obstacle. Okay, we'll keep you well away from uh, <laughs> the beautiful tents. We'll protect you. Don't worry. We'll be we'll be there holding Thank your you. hand through the process. <laughs> 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 but you're absolutely right. It is it is uh, addictive, um, Time out. and um, that takes us to yeah the end of this little. Th I mean, I would have loved to have gone on for hours, but uh, same here. There's a there's a program <laughs> we have to follow, and thank you both very much again. I'm really looking forward to your performance tonight. Well, thank Thanks you for much. having us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Super. <laughs>
Wenn deine Maske habt, take off your mask and then uh, if you if you're okay with that. We're online okay. already. I just take over this microphone, saying hello to Martin Foes. It's a bit of rush, so, so so slowly we're we're getting in time with our interviews. So I welcome on board, after his wonderful gig on the seaside stage, Mr. Martin Foes. <laughs> Thank you, Andreas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for Superboot. Thank you. Thank you for Schneider's Lad and uh, and everything. Anyway, how was your gig? How was your gig? How was your gig? Very nice. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, yeah. I like the seaside stage, and it sounds good, and the monitoring was good. So it was before the rain. There was <laughs> there was no <laughs> rain today. Oh, today no, no rain. Yeah, no, no. it was just a joke. I'm just. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, no umbrellas, no rain. <laughs> That's <True>. the system. <laughs> Unfortunately, a few umbrellas are left downstairs. I hope that has nothing to do with upcoming a few, a little bit rain. Well, it's okay, it's okay. We are used to it in Europe. Hmm? We are used to it in Europe. Especially this part of Europe. Yeah. So, yeah, your music is like, uh, we can say, cello meets electronic. It's, uh, is it so that the, uh, the electronic is like an extension for the cello? cello? Well, it's like, it's... it's I use both as an instrument, so the modular synthesizer and the buchla I use as an instrument, and the cello as well. So I a complement like them together as an ensemble kind of. Ah, okay. So the uh, modular is playing, and you are playing on top. Yeah. So, so I'm so my own string quartet, but then the other three players are Electronic. oscillators. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I saw you. You were playing also with uh, a ribbon control. So would you say? This is uh, the a, a ribbon control is next to a string instrument. Well, especially with the Haken uh, con continuum. Oh. Or this this is the one I use today. Um, well, this is very organic for me. I mean, it was so enlightened to have this under my fingers as a synthesizer or do stuff with it because you can do vibrato and all kinds of stuff that I'm used to to do with the cello. So this is like very similar to me, but mm -hmm. it's like you go the other way around. So it's not like I mostly play the vibrato and the, and the, and the melodies with the right hand, but with the cello I play everything <laughs> with the left hand. But yeah. then still, it also feels like you're bowing the string. So, but y I really had to learn uh, uh, to have the right pitch um, with the right hand, which is very different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Uh, why don't why didn't you edit it to play it with the left hand? Uh, because um, it doesn't feel natural to go to the low low part with yeah. Mm. I, I mean, I also play piano sometimes, so then it it's reversed. It's, it's, it's it crazy. That's yeah. confusing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, are you um, an educated classical musician? Yeah, I I play cello since I was five years old, and my parents are also both musicians. And my brothers and sister are sisters are also professional musicians. Oh, okay. <laughs> violin it's and in clarinet. The family. And, yeah. <laughs> and then I studied at the conservatory in Amsterdam uh, my bachelor classical cello. And then I studied a master um, modern music. And then later I studied a master electronic music where you have Max MSP mm. and Super Collider. Yeah. And they had like a Sinton, a big Sinton synthesizer in the, it's the Dutch modular company. In in the in the school, and that was my first kind of meeting mm. with modular, and it felt very natural because yeah, you have Max MSP is also you connect. Yeah, and Super Collider means that you're also into coding. A little bit, yeah. I also have the teletype, the monomy teletype yeah. module where you can oh code. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, I I can say I'm a coder, but I n I know some. But it helps. Language, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You also moved to Berlin now, uh, so this is, um, what's the special thing with Berlin? Why did you move here and not to Munich or London or Paris? Well, actually, here I have already a lot of musical friends and um, yeah, the environment for me here is very logical to move because I knew already a lot of people that work in the industry here. But I also miss my friends from Utrecht I mean, we had a big studio complex with uh, Colin Benders, and uh, we had a studio next to each other. But now, during Super Boot, he sleeps on my couch, so we still are close together, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 So you you are into circuit bending also. Well, I did this in school a little bit. We had like screws in a plank and then an amp in the middle and you connect with your fingers, you connect uh, well, with some op amps and some other stuff. But I'm not I'm not very much into it now. No, no, but okay. But I have some friends that are like error instruments, yeah, Paul yeah, Tas for instance, you know, and uh, he shows me some stuff and it always sounds really cool, but I'm more yeah, into the traditional yeah. There's a big Dutch scene, as you just mentioned, Colin Danders and the uh, uh, people in uh, Utrecht, that's yeah. it. And uh, then there's plenty of manufacturers and shops, uh, much more, for instance, than in France or Austria. So uh, yeah. can you say, is there a difference between the people in the Netherlands uh, dealing with electronic music to those over here, being more into techno, perhaps, or more... Well, you have a big uh, dance scene in the Netherlands, of course, like Amsterdam Dance Event, and you have very big uh, dance artists from the Netherlands, like Chesto, like back in the days. But I don't know if it has uh, so much to do with um, with 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 this uh, with the modular scene in the Netherlands. But there is a big dance scene, yeah, yeah, in the Netherlands. And but um, I didn't know that there was more manufacturers from the Netherlands than from France, for instance. So. Okay, okay, because Spain is also pretty big, I think, uh, mm. but um, yeah, I, I don't know, I actually don't know where this comes from, no, no. In the end, in the end, we're, uh, in the end we're in Europe here, and we're a European family in between, there's plenty of people from Netherlands, and as you say, plenty of people from Spain, and uh, plenty of people in Germany, and English people, but in the end, Europe is a uh, thing, if we get it together, this is probably it, what we need to... Yeah, and also, I mean, it's five hours by train from Amsterdam to here, so... <laughs> okay, that's... Five and a half, far. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about your projects? Uh, do you have your own solo project, or is there something else? Yeah, I have one solo project um, with under my own name, but I also do a collaboration with uh, Visuals. I This year, I actually did a collaboration with Christopher Bauder, who is also based in Berlin. He has mm. some museum called Dark Matter. And um, but I also do uh, I do all kinds of projects. I work also as a producer for uh, some other artists, and I do quite a lot for uh, uh, people that are signed with Deutsche Grammophon. So this is the classical part again, and uh, so it goes all kinds of uh, ways. But I always try to have my own uh, yeah stamp on it. So I would like to um, forgive that I interrupt now and say thank you very much to well, thank you. Martin Foes from original Netherlands, now living in Berlin. Yeah. And we meet up in the Ritterstraße more often here and there saying, hey, hello, Netherlands, hey, hello, <laughs> Berlin. And um, uh, he has played a wonderful concert that was recorded and will be seen soon on our channel. And now we will have some more impressions about what's going on here in the Obergeschoss at the super booth and then we see again for the next topic in the Großer Konzertsaal. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, put it on. Yeah. Thanks. Well. <laughs>
We welcome on board Mr. Reinhold Heil. Thank you for coming. Hey. We can't hear you yet. Did you turn on your microphone? I did. Yeah. He I did. did. Turn him louder, please. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Woo. hello, hello. Hello. Hey, 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 hey. Can you hear me? There we are. So Can you, you are me? part of Superbooth now. Most people are outdoors right. because we are in the EV early afternoon and uh, the weather is fine after having mm -hmm. had a rainy afternoon yesterday where we gave everybody an umbrella for free where there's a super logo. Unfortunately, we can't share this with you, so we have to send you the umbrella with the super logo. I, and would, I would need it because it rains, but you know what? The rain is so warm, you go out into the pouring rain and it's fine. Drecksack. <laughs> <laughs> What's so, the time now, Reinhold? Uh, well, it's, it, it's 5.38. The sun hasn't risen yet. Ah. I mean, if it would be back in June, I guess it would, the sun would just come up, but uh, it's not, not happening yet. I think within the next half hour or so, it'll come up. Okay, so it's really dark. It's not that you're sitting in the dark and you're no. having a dark studio. It's really dark. No, it's really dark. I mean, I have, I have the curtains. Usually I have to draw the curtains because the sun is so bright. But uh, at this point, it's really totally dark. I think the first light is crawling over the horizon. I can see it somewhere down there. There's a coffee farm next door. So yes, it's, but I th it's, a, it's a country setting here. Okay. <laughs> But I think we get an exp impression of the sunny weather when we watch your video you sent to us. Oh yeah, that's true. There's like a few seconds of it in it. I, I, was, I had to cut it down because I was thinking, okay, maybe we should talk a little more. So are we live? Are we, are we talking about this thing? Are we talking about the quantum yet? Or? Oh yes, please. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, did everybody see the video? Not yet. Should Not yet. Well, we wanna, I think you we should see look the video first. first. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yes. I think okay. so. I think so it's the best we way. sit down. You are it sitting has, down already. It, it has three minutes of very Aloha basic, from the boring Big Island of Hawaii. explanations. We and then are just one minute showing you the quadraphonic possibilities of, of the Waldorf quantum so. synthesizer today. Okay. And let's start this. That, Thank you, Reinhold. To my studio. So, welcome to my quantum, wired up in quadra, but for the purpose of this demonstration, it's only stereo. Whatever I pan to the left is the main output of the quantum, which carries a stereo signal, and what I pan to the right is another stereo signal, which is for the rear, and you see that it's the same guitar performance that's kind of looped. It's using the granular engine, it's using just two oscillators with the same sample coming out the front, coming out the rear in different ways. And that's how I immerse myself with sound and got pretty hooked on it. So to, to do this, first you have to put the quantum into the layered mode. In voices, you go layered. The controller mode is both because you're, I'm really only using the, the mod wheel here. Um, the controllers can of course be allocated and designed very differently for layer one and layer two. So if you um, do the mod wheel and it addresses like say 10 different parameters in different ways in the front and rear, you can do a ton of things. So that, talking about a macro controller of epic proportions. Um, so under the levels, you can determine like say layer one does not go out the aux, but does go out the main output. Layer two does not go out the main output, it's off, and send aux is on. And then again, the master shows you, you know, the layer two comes out of the aux, and you see the meters going the same, layer one comes out of main, and so on and so on. So that's the simple principle. Uh, you have an extra two speakers, set them up, and go bonkers, and then put potentially at the beginning just a bread and butter pad or something, whatever you like, 
into the layer one and the layer two and then treat them differently, maybe start by detuning them a little bit, which is what you would do in order to get a pretty wide stereo image. If you have several oscillators, you would detune them a little again uh, in, the, in the left channel and the right channel. And you would also do this in the front and the rear in order to make the whole thing even more immersive. The different effects engines should have completely different settings, maybe different echo times, different reverb settings. There could be a different chorus on the front and the, and the rear, and so on and so on. And then the sky's the limit. The question is not what can you do with a quantum. The question is what, what can't, can't you do with a quantum? I know, blah, blah, blah. Stop all this talking, play the piece, and then talk to the people. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome sound. I think, oh, to Karl Heinz, you're uh, talking about Stockhausen. Yeah, I'm just, I was, w w as I was doing this patch, I was wondering how long Karl Heinz Stockhausen would have taken back in the 50s to create something like that. And I yeah. felt really bad for him. And that's why I thought <laughs> we'd dedicate that to him. And, and I already, you know, it, at my advanced age, I already, I'm already pissed off about all the ama amazing technology that I'm going to be missing after I'm dead. And I think that Karl Heinz probably felt the same way. And uh, I think it's, it's really important to kind of acknowledge the pioneers and what they had to go through with like putting snippets of tape together in order to do yeah, that. It's all tape work. montage. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you listen to Gesang der Jünglinge now, it is still absolutely fucking fantastic, you know? So, uh, yeah, yes, so that's and uh, it's too bad we didn't, uh, we weren't possible uh, able to hear this in four channel uh, because also yeah. the immersive aspect of this composition is uh, originally in five channel. Um, it's had four. It's just quad. You know, are, are you talking about uh, Karl Heinz Stockhausen now, or yes, the original? Because he, uh, he, yeah, he composition is five channel, and I had right, a chance right. uh, to hear a performance in the cathedral in Cologne where they uh, mixed it down to four channel. So mm -hmm. uh, I have an impression how this can sound. So the, uh, this uh, okay. grants, uh, grains are, are just flying through the room then. Yeah, he has, he absolutely did spatial composition. The spatial oh, aspect was part of his, of oh. his, uh, 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 I actually have some sound in, in my headphones that shouldn't be in there. I don't know what it is. We're here for a moment. Okay. But right now it's good. So uh, what I'm saying is there's, of course, another reason to bring in Stockhausen because he had also, he already had that vision. Of course, the technology wasn't really, really there. He had to have live installations where enough speakers were there or the musicians were sp spread mm. out around, uh, across the room. Just like, you know, it's, it's, it's really important to kind of just realize that there were people at a time where it was so difficult to imagine all this who ha had these amazing visions. So uh, hats off to, to Karl Heinz. And, uh, and at the same time, we're now entering a phase where Dolby Atmos becomes kind of mainstream, you know, 12 years later. And I was fortunate enough to see a, a Dolby Atmos mixed movie 
in a theater mm. where it was actually mixed with like a 20 something channel uh, installation. And I was blown away by it. And this was in 2009. I've basically been <laughs> waiting for, for being able to get my hands on this kind of technology. And uh, now I'm like at this point where I'm, where I'm there. And that's why, uh, you know, I've been working in 5.1 uh, for 18 years now, since 2003. And of course, I've been doing things with synthesizers in, in quad. It's mostly just quad. And it's fine because you can blow it up to more speakers, but uh, just the, to leave the stereo realm and to go um, a little bit more spatial uh, with, with a sound that is perceived as one element, right? So we're not talking about a big ensemble, but th this is why in my, in my mm -hmm. example, and also with the Otto Stockhausen, it's basically the, the, uh, uh, the sound material in the front and the rear channel is very similar. It it's, appears to be the same element, but it is incoherent. There's no phase relationship. Nothing, you know, uh, zeros down to like a like a phantom middle in the stereo in the stereo signal, where the bass drum comes from the middle. Although there is no speaker because it's exactly mm -hmm. the same signal in the left and right. So you have to just make sure to create as many differences uh, between the front and the rear as possible. And the quantum makes it super easy and it's a lot of fun i mean you can do it with plugins you can do it with other synthesizers as long as they have several outputs mm -hmm. you can also do it with the modular like for instance if you have civilization by by yuhi um you know it's it one of its many many functions is that it is a quad panner for four inputs that can be thrown around a quad mm -hmm. uh installation and to be honest i have one and I have been working here on other things, so I haven't really, really entered that, uh, that field yet. And I've been kind of focusing on, on the quantum. I've done a lot of uh, uh, patches that are immersive. And what I'm planning to do, and I'm going to do this today, I'm going to actually put a handful of these patches together and uh, give them to Rolf, and he can put them on the Waldorf website. I'm going to also put them on my website. <laughs> 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 and uh, and they will function as templates if you if you want to go there and if you actually w want if you have a quad setup um, and you want and you have a quantum and uh, you want to take a little shortcut you know compared to what I had to do to, because I, I worked on this for for a long time you know whenever I have time I kind of get into it and and I go what else could I change you know so. I mean, you know, if you have something like this, let's say, and you're only hearing this in mono now because of Zoom, you know, so it's like completely <laughs> absurd that I'm trying to show you something immersive when it comes out in mono, but like there are two, they are very intense <coughs> flangers and they're very different in the front and the rear. There are also echo times that are different. There's, the, there's a little detuning between, between the front and the rear and the more of that you do, the more immersive the whole thing gets. Um, there's also, I mean, there's so many other possibilities to create these differences. Like you have a sequence that runs in the front and it runs, let's say, 16 steps and it runs just circular, just like your usual mm -hmm. uh, uh, <coughs> sequence. You have another one running in the back and only has nine steps and it runs in pendulum. And it plays the same scale, but it plays different notes, but they will harmonize because it plays the same scale. So stuff like that with mm -hmm. the quantum, it's, it's a lot of fun. And what's also awesome about it is that all the syncing that goes on, synchronization of delay times of LFOs and stuff like that mm -hmm. is really rock solid in the quantum. I think there is one guy very proud now in this moment. It's Rolf Wurman, the, the developer of the quantum. Yeah, right. And Reinhard, this it's really a great present to give us the templates. And what's even more uh, interesting and fun, and maybe it goes back to also to Karl Heinz, because he used some he repurposed stuff, technical equipment from engineers, sign mm. uh, oscillators, which has never been built to do some crazy electronic music, um, but to do technical stuff, so it's an aspect of repurposing stuff, and you are repurposing the quantum to do quad. Quantum was never been <laughs> built purposely to do 
quad, it, uh, but it, it's <laughs> that quantum effect that it has in inherent possibility and a, a talented musician like you takes it out, does something with it, falls in love, and we had mm -hmm. many conversations about it, how we can support you on doing this, and that's wonderful. That's, that's how an instrument evolves. We give it to the people, we give it in the world to, to artists, creators, people, and they do whatever they want to do with it. Yeah, what then is it lives on. What is interesting about that is uh, that um, you have many synthesis engines in, inside right. the quantum, yeah. uh, like granular and resonators. This is considered as experimental. So this is uh, something we know from software, uh, from plugins, and now you, we have this in a hardware synthesizer. Yes, we wanted to get a little bit of the, the great experimental stuff out of the realm of experimental music, which is fine in itself, but sneak that in to a classical keyboard synthesizer setting. For these people who want to have an instrument which is compact in itself, which uh, uh, they don't have to patch, but give them also the, uh, the opportunities and also repurpose granular stuff. We, we talked about that today. Typically in a granular modular setting, you have one sound, you double it, you cloud it, yeah. um, but you are not playing it polyphonically. And giving it now, let granular stuff sneak in to keyboard player that they can play harmonies with it or counterpoint, or whatever what they do on the keyboard, uh, um, this opens up, uh, this is again this kind of repurposing stuff in a new context, and this is what creativity most of the time is. Yeah, right? I, I, I didn't know uh, before that each single voice is an eight voice granulator. So this yes. is, this is uh, very much for, for experiments. Um, but how is this with you, uh, Reinhold? Uh, you have also uh, the, the, the DRW as the central part, I think, of your studio. Yeah. And yes. what, what about hardware synthesizers? Is it like, well, you, grow, you grew up with it stuff and uh, you're just yeah, happy I grew to up have with hardware. One? No, I mean, and I grew out of them, you know, because ah. I'm that old. <laughs> I, my first synth was a mini Moog in 1974, so that's coming on to 50 years, and I still have that mini Moog, and I had a lot of other amazing synthesizers, and I, I, I sold a lot of them very sadly. I, I, I don't have the means to maintain my own synth uh, 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 museum, and at the same time, you know, other stuff gets, gets made, and uh, I was actually pretty much out of the whole hardware synthesizer Realm. I was just using it as a master key, but I used my VP1, the Yamaha VP1, which I oh, was fortunate to, to grab one. And that was actually just restored. I have it like absolutely freshened, but it's not here. It's in Los Angeles. It wouldn't <laughs> fit into this room. So you're um, half, you're, and, yeah, sorry. you're still yeah, half so in... I'm, I, I'm on this flower farm, and it's in a bedroom studio. And and uh, you know, I have my my Mac Pro and all my main monitors. Of course, the, the acoustic treatment isn't ideal, and I have you know I have the modular behind me, and I have basically just the quantum and a few preamps and uh, microphones. So, um, it it's great because I I work a lot with plugins and the quantum is sort of the the hardware synth that I'm focusing on and I always think it's great to know all of them but it's better to know one of them really deeply and I think that the 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 quantum after three years or three and a half years how long has it been on the market it's it, we have only scratched the surface that that's the wonderful thing it's actually sort of a long-term investment because you can keep experimenting your ass off with this thing which is just beautiful <laughs> and Very you know good, if you yeah. do the quad if you go to quad thing a lot of my examples are just one oscillator and you just hit you know just like with the ode to Karl Heinz it's it's a one note wonder right it's like it's like D50 back in 1985. The, the first uh, factory program was digital native dance. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this. You hit the center C and there's a bup little lip the bup little lip going on. It's kind of like that, only that you make it yourself. And, and there's one other thing that I didn't talk in my intro about, and that is the mod matrix you know, in, in the quantum. And then you have that twice because you have it in the front and the rear channel. 
you can change the things that are going on in the mod matrix. You can just have the mod wheel that does positive, negative, different amounts to different parameters simultaneously and, and uh, a ton of things go on in these different channels. And that's why it's, despite the fact that it's this multi-channel thing, it's still one instrument with one sound that you perform. And that's what I like about it. It's not a, it, it's, it's kind of a hybrid between the self-generating patches that you can do on the modular, which are super cool, and which I never was into, and I've kind of only recently, in the last few years, gotten into more of a West Coast uh, synthesis kind of vibe, uh, and, and the self-evolving patches. And, and still, at the same time, you perform it on the keyboard, and that kind of makes the composition at the end of the day. And, you know, I just love to be between all these chairs. Hey, Reinhold. Sorry. Thank you very much for all this information. This was Reinhold Heil from Hawaii. Uh, I just thought that it would be a bit decadent if I say Reinhold. Thank you for all this. We have another guest in half an hour from France, and we have a little movie prepared for in between. I wanted to say, if you are interested to listen to those um, recommendations from Reinhold and you are on the venue at Superbooth, uh, join the Waldorf tent where they probably have this instrument with even better speakers next to it than uh, we can do and realize here over the live stream. So those who are on the venue can make it. Those who are, have a competent retailer in or around wherever they are, they can do it. I don't know if there's a competent retailer in Hawaii. That would be my, my last thing. And then no. I, no, nobody, okay. And well, then I wanted to say... Island. I liked most, you know, I'm in between the old fart here with the synth nerds, and I like the much, uh, the most, uh, I wanted to say, tax the rich. Thank you for wearing that t-shirt for <laughs> Karl-Heinz Stockhausen. And now we go ahead with a little movie and an impression of what's going on on Superbooth, and then we will meet again here in about 20 minutes for a chat like this with Jean-Michel Jarre. So thanks a lot to Hawaii again, and it was a pleasure Thank to meet you. Thank you for having way. me. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. here under our plastic roof in the rain. Um, I am Marcel from Motor Music and let's take a little look at our DR2 drum machine here. Uh, the DR2 is a completely digital drum machine. It has six channels, six instruments, and for each of the six instruments you can choose a different uh, synthesis model. Uh, at this moment on this drum set here, we have this bass drum, a claps, it is quite loud, um, a cymbal, a snare, a rim shot, and a crash cymbal. But you can constitute your own, your own drum sets. If you want six snare drums in a drum set, that's all very possible. Um, how does it work? For example, let's look at this bass drum model. It has a sine wave uh, oscillator and every model has a pitch uh, setting and an, uh, an amp envelope. With the decay setting or without pitch envelope. Um, so that's the basic sine wave oscillator and then next to that there is a um, 
parallel line where this oscillator gets uh, distorted, filtered and distorted again. And so you can set all the filter parameters and the drive up to self-oscillation. That's one example of a model. I'm not going to all the models uh, in detail. Um, the drive bass drum, this is a square bass drum that uh, has a square wave oscillator that then gets filtered with a low pass filter and a notch filter. a bit about the synthesis. There are three bass drums, three snare drum models, uh, maybe a bit on that later, uh, three different cymbals and then a few, um, a few minor other um, synthesis models. Uh, next to that there's also of course a sequencer and you know the drill, here are the 16 buttons with the 16 LEDs. Um, but many people will already see it. There are not 16 LEDs, there are 32 LEDs. So what can you do? Next to the classic 16 steps, also the 30 second notes, the notes, the little notes in between are also available to program in the, in the sequencer. Uh, next to that, there's also uh, reverse, um, reverse instruments. What is that? Whenever um, the machine reaches a reverse event, uh, it's not a sample that starts playing backwards or something, it's the, 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 the drum synthesis keeps running, but all the envelopes that are involved uh, start running backwards. So the volume goes back up, the pitch goes back up, uh, and so you get this reverse sound. Uh, let's program a little thing. We have our four on the floor bass drum here, so now for example we program a reverse here. You hear the bass drum going back. Uh, next to that there's also breaks to immediately break a note. Let's give that an example too. So we have here a double bass drum and then two breaks right after them. Um, next to that, um, oh yeah, let's uh, show it on our rim shot here, flams. Most people probably know it, it's a double hit. And you can set the separation time. Uh, and next to that there are also tuplets. That's a sequence a number of consequent drum hits and there's also the possibility to let them go down in velocity like uh, like a bit like an echo effect or like an upcoming drum roll um, can I program an example with that uh, maybe I cut the bass drum mm. Not exactly sure where I'm going to arrive now. With an extra reverse. And so on. So there is a bit more, uh, both 
in the synthesis. It's an actual drum synthesizer. It has a lot of parameters, a bit more on that uh, soon. And also on the sequencing. Uh, it's more than just 16 steps. Um, let's give one more example. We go a bit more in a techno style this time. Oh yeah, maybe important, there's also on every instrument a compressor. I'm going to, bit to put a bit of compression on the bass drum here. Without compression and with a bit of compression. to know there is also a um, Euclidean generator in it so let's check it now on the uh, on the rim shot over here I'll replace the rim shot pattern with the seven hits in 16 steps Euclidean rhythm Let's check uh, one other example. Um, we tried to make uh, some uh, motor approach on the on the on the classic Amen break. Didn't work all the way through, but maybe you will recognize. check one last example oh no let's check one other uh, because uh, what we already saw now um, some classic techno that's absolutely what you can do with the DR tool uh, some more special breakbeat things but I also think you can use it for more uh, hip hop hip hop style things I'm far from a hip hop artist myself so I don't know how I'm, how I'm doing but So 
maybe one, one uh, last word on the synthesis. Every, um, every synthesis model has a pitch section and an amp section. That's uh, the same in all the models. And then an X, Y, Z, T uh, parameter that are four parameters that are different for any, uh, for any drum model. So let's, for example, we have a different bass drum here. That is the noise bass drum. Uh, and that's, again, a classic uh, bass drum. And then there is a parallel. Uh, oh, it's over here. A parallel uh, noise oscillator for which you can set the filter frequency. So you can use it, for example, to have a short noise burst in the beginning of your bass drum. Or, of course, uh, it's often better with a bit longer decay. A lower, deeper noise uh, layer that's going next to the rest of the bass drum. Um, let's get one more example. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This was Modor, another Gesprächskonzert uh, from the Fuchsbau. Um, <clears throat> hey, uh, Internet, this is a Superboot from Berlin, and this was another Gesprächskonzert. Uh, from uh, company Motor that was live recorded here on the venue next to the Fuchsbau. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. And uh, I wanted to let you know a little bit about our upcoming program because we have two more days here on the Super Booth and the weather seems to be fine. We survived the rain yesterday and the audience is happy, the exhibitors are happy, and uh, we are able to welcome a few more people, so if you are uh, still in Amsterdam, has nothing else to do on Friday and Saturday, it makes sense to get on the next train to be with us for Friday and Saturday, where we have uh, plenty of artists that I would like to introduce. And the first one is a friend of mine who's now living in Berlin. He's originally uh, French, and uh, he uh, started to work with synthesizers a while ago. He's having a lot of stuff from Mr. Ken Macbeth, having big scale modules, having these amazing synthesizers and uh, uh, VCOs from him in the system. And he's um, playing tomorrow on our Seaside stage at 12.30. If you want to uh, see this, this is always a very nice uh, ambient electronic set. Thank you. And uh, if you will go deeper into the theme with uh, Macbeth, Mr. Macbeth will be here on the live stream tomorrow at 4 p.m. And then there will also be Mr. T. Raumschmiere uh, with uh, Sinjan from uh, England. And they will play the performance that we all know from the last year and the year before where Ken Macbeth was performing as an 18-year-old boy because he used to perform in a band when he was 18 years old like that. And uh, we was all wondering about this amazing thing. Unfortunately, he can't come this year in person, but we will have him on the live stream. And I guess this will also be kind of a performance because T. Raumschmiere and Sinjen will be here on the stage. And now we will have a look for Sascha Ketterlin, 
Um, he is playing a little performance and explaining what he does. And then I will let you know the rest of the program before we will welcome our next guest on the live stream from France. Thank you. So we are online again. So this was Sasha Ketelin with his nice performance. And uh, I will continue with my little highlights for tomorrow. This is, you just mentioned uh, Macbeth. I'm very excited about speaking to Ken. Um, then we have lots of uh, Gesprächskonzerte. Uh, the first one will be Bitwick. And then we have Acid Rain Technologies from Seattle. It will be here in the auditorium. Um, very interesting modules from Canada. And um, then we will have interviews with Jaco Jaco and Carlotta. Very interesting. After that, this is, this is um, um, a nice thing. Uh, L1 from Belarus. Can you say uh, something about uh, uh, L1 from Belarus? Aha, no, the idea about that's interesting. Uh, that's a company from Belarus who is making uh, modules. And one of my employees founded private with private interest on the web oh. because uh, they are uh, they was offering uh, kits from Belarus for their modules that you could order, and then you get an envelope with a main board and the front plate and That's nothing cool. else, and then you have to collect the spare parts wherever you are, <laughs> and then you solder it together. And he helped him a lot, and he was offering quite interesting modules, but uh, you know, you don't uh, have a high tax if you just uh, send an empty 
um, board and, and a front plate uh, from here to there, this is not a high value, but in the end it's the, it's the, um, um, wie heißt das, um, das intellectual uh, property that he's selling to you, in the end you have a module, yeah. and if you have been to the DIY workshops that we have on the venue here, you understand the idea, okay, I can solder it myself, and if I get the spare parts from a local dealer, I don't pay tax for 500, uh, I don't know, and I get it from Belarus, because my first question was when I heard a company from Belarus, uh, this is another world at the time, we all know from the news what's going on there, and this will hopefully also be a little topic in our Gesprächskonzert, but in the end we're interested in what is he doing there, because uh, we were very fascinated and impressed by the quality of modules, and he changed and he uh, now is also offering ready-made modules that we uh, have available in a few cases already here from Berlin. So yeah, and maybe tomorrow I get something soldiered for myself, I, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you want to have more experiences on that, uh, we can also recommend you the workshops on the venue where you can solder a module uh, with yourself as a DIY kit. And you did this more often already? Well, sometimes. Okay. So In the winter season. <laughs> yes, I, I know you shared a studio with Joker, and Joker Nies is yes, when uh, you're guy soldering by experimental, you know? When you have an electronic project with uh, Joker Nies, then uh, you get infected, of course. And uh, so I started soldering my first Benjolin and uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, he's a great inspiration for that. <laughs> Yes, we have then uh, Berliner Schule, uh, Bernd Kistenmacher. Yes, an interview with uh, Bernd Kistenmacher that we intended to let you understand what uh, has been Berliner Schule <coughs> years ago because he was writing a book about it and Berliner Schule is a claim. What is Berliner Schule? You know, there's mm -hmm. a next generation that perhaps has no clue about it and all these people that used to be influencing the Berliner Schule generation they are here, but this is uh, people like Wolfgang Seidel and people like my earlier client who passed away called Konrad Schnitzler. And uh, so Bernd Kistenmacher was one of the second generation Berliner Schule. And we will try to give you an impression. And it's also a recommendation to have a look for the into the Berlin-based theater world. The Hebel am Ufer is uh, offering one week after uh, the end of Superbooth, a program about Berliner Schule and all the world and the mm. influence to the society uh, with totally uh, different uh, aspects because it's theater. But then it's relevant and I think um, it's good to let us, everybody, understand why are these electronic music topics relevant, more relevant now that they are uh, playing on a theater. You yeah, know? my first uh, thing that I uh, heard when I was like... Uh, 11 or so was Klaus Schulz a time wind that uh, was relevant but mm. now you know <laughs> it's uh, it's not your th these 18 year old uh, people who are interested in synthesizer they perhaps don't know that's why we placed this interview and I'm looking forward to yeah, get this cleared up a bit yeah if What's we, I, next? For, I forgot the band yes the, then I'm very excited uh, to, to meet Ger Gareth Jones Gareth Jones is on the venue and Gareth Jones is the producer of the latest release of Jan Thiersen, who has um, played the wonderful gig yesterday when we had this wonderful rain with these wonderful umbrellas. Mm -hmm. And um, Jan Thiersen was the wonderful producer and he's really one of my dearest yeah. uh, talk partners because um, yeah, he's so uh, reflected in using things and he's a good friend of Daniel Miller and they also had uh, not too far away a uh, new release. <coughs> Um, together they uh, made a record and um, yes, I'm I looking forward to, to talk to him about analog and digital and about old and new because he was making this album as uh, uh, my wife found out with just analog equipment so uh, I have the impression he has an opinion on that but I also wanted to talk about repair and quality and going further and saying, you know, you have synthesizers from 50 years ago and they are still repairable and uh, you can still update them, if you call it like that, <laughs> if they don't work. But what about the things from today? Can we still update them in 50 years? 
you know, and then we're directly at the engineer's opinion. I don't know if we get that done in one talk, but I think it's a relevant uh, theme. So yeah. this is what I wanted to go for, but now I was already... Another yeah. interesting question too, also uh, Tom Oberheim. We will meet on yes, Saturday. Yes, Tom Oberheim is another talk on Saturday. He's the grandfather of synthesizer, uh, in my opinion, the oldest one who's still alive because uh, yeah. Bob Moog passed away, who was with us 20 years ago. Don Buchler passed away, but Tom Oberheim is ready to... Um, he, Tom Oberheim is ready to talk with us and... Um, Together with Marcus Riley. Aha, uh -huh, okay, but that's, you, you knew him, no? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you will have probably a few questions about that and a few yeah, topics. Yeah, that's t t totally exciting. Yeah. And uh, now, because we already uh, talked about another three minutes, before we will go to France to our next visitor, I would like to give you a few more impressions uh, from what's going on here. Who are we, where are we, and we are in the middle of Superbooth, so have a look for... A uh, few impressions of the Obergeschoss. I will clear up my kittle a bit and relax, and then we will have Jean-Michel Jarre very soon here on the screen and chat further. Thank you. So, was kommt jetzt directly in den Stream oder nee noch nicht nee 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 was wollte ich noch erzählen ach so die Frenchies ja genau bin ich am online hello again we're in the middle of super booth welcome and um, we're having an appointment in a few minutes with a friend from France who already gave it a few words last year. And um, we're still not yet completely. I see Marie. Bonjour, Marie. Pardon. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. Bonjour. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the Frenchies because we have a lot of people from France on the venue. You know, we have Jan Thiersen here and... Uh, with his whole family, and we also have uh, uh, in the bungalow dorf on the wonderful venue, we have a few uh, friends from uh, France uh, with uh, the distributor sitting in France, Earwave, and a manufacturer called Earwave, sorry, and Messi and Earwave and Lo uh, Loisin, Gael Loisin. 
modular makers, and we have Arturia here. What's a French company? Though? So France is getting bigger and bigger in the synthesizer business because when I started and when we started the super booth, by the way, with our French partner Macy, who was already busy with synthesizers 20 years ago, uh, that was awesome uh, because they was understanding the vision that we have to become bigger and think European to be able to compete with Toman. Hey, there's another guy on the show. Can you hear me already? Hi, Andreas. Yes. Hey, Jean-Michel. Yes. Hi, Jean-Michel. How are you? C'est super bon uh, de voir uh, toi. Pardon. Uh, let's forget to talk French. I'm not really experienced. I always try again, but um, because all the friends, the friends from France who are living here, they speak. Every year, Andreas. You're living better every year. Yes. Uh, I'm leaving now. Okay, Marie-Laure, thank you. Marie, merci beaucoup. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. So how are you, Andreas? I'm fine. It's totally super over here. And I think um, if you would know what we're doing here, you would be sad to not be with us because it's after Superbooth 2019, where you was personally present, it's really something like the next level. I think you remember we've been going outdoors, seeing the seaside stage, and then we've been uh, behind the building. We had a few drinks and we had a nice, uh, something and now we expanded the vision of having a trade show into the park and the companies are based in tents and uh, before we realized it they couldn't even imagine what we wanted to offer and sell them ah, we have to stay in a tent and what if the, it rains and is it safe and what I happens if there's a storm and you, we had everything we had rain yesterday and uh, but you know Everybody is happy, and there's a limited number of people, but everybody is smiling, and everybody is happy with what we did, and thankful that we did it, and this is a restart for all of us to um, get together, and this, yeah. to have you on board over here in the virtual absolutely. meeting, is yeah, another absolutely. level for this. Yeah, absolutely, Andreas, and, and uh, uh, I'm really sorry not being physically with you, with you all, and I just wanted to tell you, to thank you for the name of all the electronic musicians and electronic music ecosystem. I mean, what you're doing is absolutely amazing. So thank you on behalf of all of us. How's the feeling in France? Great, it's, it's getting much better. We, 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 it seems that we are at last uh, getting, uh, uh, seeing the, the, uh, some lights at the end of the tunnel, uh, hopefully. I think it's getting better. We still, of course, are have a, we are, all have a problem for or still for gigs and, and uh, concerts and concert, but, but it's getting better, starting to, to, be, uh, uh, to, to improve a little bit. And uh, I think that uh, the concerts are starting step by step. And uh, I hope that by the end of the year, it, uh, it will be behind us. We all, all finger crossed, of course. And uh, of course, an event such as the Super Booth with all the, the creative guys proposing uh, other new products and new ideas is, uh, is something which is getting a, a very positive sign for the near future. Great. And um, do you still produce, uh, or what was one of my questions, do you still produce music for live on stage or did the whole thing that happened with us uh, change um, during the Corona times, change things in general? You know, I've been, uh, of course, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back on stage as soon as possible, but I, I, I took the opportunity to, uh, during the pandemic, to uh, explore uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, art forms, and, and, and I've been heavily involved in uh, VR, and in, in VR and XR. I, I produced two, uh, uh, two events and one major event for the, uh, for the last uh, New Year's Eve, uh, a, live, uh, a live VR concert in a VR Notre Dame, and we've, we've been uh, very successful and, and uh, we, we, we've, we've been followed by more than 70, 75 million people all around the world. It was a, a real premiere having a, a, a live VR concert in uh, VR Notre Dame and I was live myself uh, in, uh, in, a rec in a studio in the center of Paris and my avatar was live in, uh, in Notre Dame. And uh, VR for me was, uh, uh, has been uh, uh, such a, 
uh, uh, interesting mode of expression in in the days days of the pandemic to try to ex to to try to to explore other ways to share music and and uh, and shows in a different way and i think that uh, via now is going to 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 be one of the next uh, uh, new uh, media and you know andreas and, and everybody I've, i've been i've been really in, interested by the fact that suddenly i had the feeling to pioneering pioneering Uh, something new, like uh, back in time when I was starting electronic music by, I mean, surrounded by lots of whiz kids, I mean, just uh, developing new, new art forms. It, it, you know, it made me think about uh, the, the beginning of cinema uh, in the 19th century uh, during the Frère Lumière when, uh, when uh, lots of people from the theater were saying, but you know, these people, I mean, moving on a white screen uh, on, on a Uh, in, in circus, because it, the, the first movies were, were projected in circus, it was like a magic trick. And lots of people in the world of theater were saying, but you know, these guys moving, moving, uh, moving on a white screen, they're not really actors. A real actor is somebody on stage in front of a the, uh, real, pub, real audience. And cinema became the major art form we know. And I think VR is going to be the same. Uh, it's going to not only to... Uh, To uh, compete, it's not not the, to compete to the to live performance, but actually to be really something uh, which is uh, uh, which is going to be a new art form, generating new artists, new newcomers, uh, and uh, and actually I I was in Berlin unfortunately three days ago. I had to come back to Paris because uh, I just released the the Blu-ray and the vinyl of uh, Welcome to the Other Side, the the, the concept uh, of the of this concert in uh, virtual Notre Dame. So actually. This is something very interesting, and I hope that in the next few years, in uh, in Superbooth, you will have probably some uh, some VR products uh, emerging and, and coming along because it's a new, really new media, and for musicians, it's also another way to to share our music in a different way because there is a social aspect, and I will finish with this uh, briefly. But there is a social aspect with VR. You have you can connect with people who are isolated ge for geographic reasons, for physical, for handicap. And all sharing uh, a, a same, uh, the same uh, uh, moment all together, wherever you are in China, in Brazil, in America, or in Europe, or uh, anywhere else. And this is a very exciting uh, new, uh, new art form, I think. And, and actually, strangely enough, the pandemic played a role as an accelerator for this new, uh, new, new art form. I think right. that's very much the idea of the Superboot this year. Exactly. To have this, this great exchange to um, many, many, many different countries uh, are coming exactly. together. Yeah, ab absolutely. Are you planning uh, live shows again with uh, all this bunch of uh, analog yeah. stuff? Yes, I'm, I'm planning different, I have different projects for 2022 where, you know, it's really strange what happened to, with this, I don't know what the, the, uh, the other colleagues are, are, are feeling or the, all the people Uh, being uh, around uh, at Superbooth, but uh, for me, I know that when I'm going to go back on stage, it's not going to be the same as before. And, and I think I really would like to uh, to think uh, and to stage a concert in a different way, and certainly mixing uh, the uh, traditional way of uh, doing a gig and doing concert on stage with XR, uh, VR, AR elements, and uh, mixing a kind, of being in the kind of digital type of situation where you have. A, a live concert, a live gig, but also at the same time having some uh, live VR elements at the same time. By the way, I should say hello to you from Ken Macbeth that you met in ah, Edinburgh. Ah, cool, great. <laughs> <coughs> And uh, Daniel Miller said he would have a question to you if you are around, but now he's not around. Okay, so say, hey, give my love to them, to both of them. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they are great friends and uh, it's always a pleasure to uh, To get together, and of course, Superbooth is a is, is a unique opportunity to to gather everybody or or kinds of established artists or known artists, but also DJs and beginners and uh, and 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 younger audience. It's always a, a great great moment. And there's already the date for May 22, where we will make the next one. Perhaps you can ask Marie to make a note for that. that yeah, of course, of course, time. with and pleasure. We, we hope, because, because, you know, we're also having a chat tomorrow with Atom, or the day after tomorrow with Atom TM about, is it okay if we still fly around to spread the cultural vision of what we're doing? 
uh, because, you know, uh, flying from here to there, but from Paris you could also, would you take a train if you go to Paris or would you say, oh man, that's too hard and too long, I better take the plane, how far are you over there, how far is the self-understanding in France or in your uh, size of business, you know, in the end? You know, I, I think my, you know, I think two things, two brief comments about that. I think first of all, we 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 have to be whatever everybody thinks. We have we we need to have vaccines because this is the, the only way to get out from these uh, dark times. And the second point is, if you res respect all, all the the, uh, the mask and and the uh, and the alcohol and, and the, the gel and, and all that, I mean, you can travel these days. You know, I was in Berlin. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, with you today, not not for because of the virus. I'm not here because I'm I'm stuck here, yeah, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have been with, with you all. And uh, uh, I think now we, we have to also, uh, uh, as long as we we are we are safe and we, we take care of ourselves and take care of the others, I think we should go back to a normal life as soon as we can. Great. So uh, you know, I was I was uh, sorry, but you know, I was I was. Uh, flying to uh, Berlin, uh, I mean, last Friday, and uh, and the flight was was okay. People are, are very cautious, and uh, the companies are, are very cautious. It was safe in both in the Paris airport and Berlin airport. You know, I, I think it's. Uh, I had the feeling that we 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 have still to be careful, but uh, it seems that uh, the virus seems to be, for the first time, maybe a, a little bit behind us. I'm I'm very I'm very cautious when I'm saying this because we said that also last year. We have to, unfortunately, we, there is one, one uh, key moment. It's when uh, in, uh, later in November, when, when it's going, getting colder, we hope that it's not going to, to, uh, to be like uh, last year. But the major difference is most of the people are, uh, have uh, our vaccine. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a different, totally different situation. Yeah. Instead of traveling, uh, how is it, um, how did you get in touch with other musicians? Um, are you using um, online sessions for that? Of course, yes, online sessions, and, and also, as I said, also uh, uh, VR is also a wonderful way of getting together through with your avatars. You know, you have uh, you have now it's developing big big time, and what's great is actually you can be in the same room, but with people uh, from Manchester or from Berlin or from Rio or Beijing or Moscow or Africa or whatever, and that that is something. It's a, a real game changer. But I think this is uh, possible, or um, w when you're knowing somebody, uh, I think it's it's uh, much much uh, more difficult when with somebody else you don't know. To no, jam online. Yeah, I mean, the, the, beaut the beauty of, of an event in VR is actually if anybody can join, even if you don't know them, they can be in the same room and and with no latency, and that is a is a huge it's a huge difference. And I was I was doing a Q and A session recently in. A, in, uh, and I was in, uh, in, in uh, this VR space, and so suddenly you had uh, uh, DJs or people in the same virtual room with the avatars, just with the uh, uh, goggles. And, uh, and after five minutes, you forget that you are in front of people, and, uh, or the, the, the avatars of people, uh, being in themselves, being in Manchester or, or, or Dusseldorf or, or Warsaw or Madrid, and we are, you're all in the same room. So, the big advantage of this, I'm not, I'm not selling anything on, on, on this. I'm not trying to convince anybody because it's a, you have to try it. It's, it's, a, it's a real game changer, especially for musicians to, to actually share our music in a totally different way, especially in days where live, live, or live uh, concerts are, are still a bit uh, uh, a question mark. But I, actually, even apart from that, as I was saying before, I think it's going to be... A, to be a, a real art form in itself. But actually, otherwise, as everybody else in, the, in society, we use Zoom and Teams to try to, con to connect together and having working sessions. But you know, to tell you the truth, I, my last project, I, I had uh, my, uh, my colleagues working on, on my album. One, was in, uh, one is in Vancouver, the other one is in LA, the other one is in uh, Manchester, um, uh, Glasgow, and you, you, we worked uh, with on live Ableton, for instance, by team viewer or by sharing screens process uh, live, and uh, uh, 
with the time difference, some people could complete uh, the session while I was sleeping and, and, uh, and the reverse. So in the morning, I, I, was, I was following the, 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 the session, having progressed while I was sleeping. So it's not only this, uh, process, this way of uh, working, especially for electronic music, is not new. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's existing for production, uh, even it was existing before, prior to the uh, pandemic. Great. I wanted to uh, come to a totally different theme and uh, ask you about how you, how's your view on the German votes for the European world and uh, the German-French special friendship. Do you have an opinion on that? Because we have votes next week and, uh, you know, you had all these uh, trouble with and without and with Macron and, uh, you know, Europe is in a change somehow. The whole world is in a change and we have to change something. And uh, I don't know if you want to give it some words or if you say, oh. No, I mean, I mean, two, two, two things quickly. I mean, the, the f first of all, we know that uh, France and Germany uh, are the spine of, of Europe in a sense, uh, in terms of politics and economy, and it has a, it's, it has a domino effect on the, on, on the other countries. And so we have, we have, as French and German people, a kind of responsibility, uh, politically, uh, globally. I'm not talking about parties and things like this. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, elections in France or in, in Germany are going to uh, to uh, have uh, necessarily a kind of uh, uh, consequence and some consequences on the, the, the European policy. And uh, but I think that on for for Superboot and for for us as artists, I think culture is the main link for Europe. I think Europe is existing first of all through culture. And, and more than in, more than anything else, I think when you are in Berlin, in Madrid, in uh, in Warsaw, in uh, in in Roma, or in uh, in London, or in Paris, you, you, we we feel that we are we are belonging to a, to a, the same community, which is not necessarily true politically, but culture is a should be a Trojan horse to to ease and to uh, to soothe the the pain, partly after the pandemic, and you know. Uh, music and movies and books and graphic arts and uh, everything else sure. is actually uh, uh, also a, a domain where Europe is still ahead of, uh, of, the, of the world in terms of, uh, of projects, ideas. I mean, it's very interesting to, uh, to uh, not to forget that most of uh, those, for instance, are German, are Europeans, German. You take uh, Steinberg, you, you Steinberg, you take, you take uh, uh, Ableton, Ableton, you take uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, all, all, almost all those are German or coming from Europe. And uh, it, it shows that even in, in our world of electronic music, how Europe is important and also what you are doing as with uh, Schneider's Laden and, and, uh, and the, the, uh, uh, all the, the, the Euro rack, you know, Euro rack, in Euro rack, you have Europe. And, you know, we, we, we have a legitimacy. We, we, we created this this electronic music. I mean, electronic music has nothing to do, basically, originally with jazz, blues, and rock. It's, it didn't, it's, it's, uh, it's really from co co coming from common continental Europe, uh, from Stockhausen and Pierre Henry and Pierre Schaeffer and uh, Luigi Rossolo in the 1910 in Italy, writing the Heart of Noise and Leon Theremin in Moscow. So we have a real legitimacy. And, and this, is, this is probably one of the best example of what Europe is able to, to, uh, to conceive and to create. We, we feel European over here because there's people from all over Europe uh, who could come here and, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful get-together of cultural people here. Yeah, and, and uh, you were just uh, calling all, all the names of the, the artists, European artists, we should not forget your work about uh, the last decades of electronic music and uh, being <coughs> into technology. Uh, yes, what, what, what do you mean, you, what do you want me to comment on this? <laughs> so we had uh, the talk about Karl-Heinz Stockhausen yes. earlier in with, uh, with the Reinhold guy from Heil. With Reinhold Heil from Hawaii, we, uh, he made a little video and uh, we ha had a chat before we met you now. And uh, he's living on Hawaii, and uh, he was re, um, how, how do you say, do, relating uh, his composition that he yeah, played. Yeah, it was an ode to Karl Heinz, he called it. And it was, uh, yes, at least a, a granular uh, sound 
he played, and um, this was related to Karl Heinz Stockhausen's uh, Gesang der Jünglinge, where he uh, recorded uh, snippets of sine waves and uh, transposed them, and was a tape montage, and it uh, was a kind of that. So, and uh, you know, it's, it, it's very interesting what you're saying about uh, the Karl Heinz Stockhausen. I've, I've, I've been really honored to to uh, work at, in his studio, and when I was in the Music Research Center with Pierre Schaeffer, and and you know, it's amazing that. These people in the, in the 40s, in the 50s, they, they, they invented everything, you know? They invented the, they were the first DJs in the time, in a, in a sense, yes. where, where you had, the, uh, in the case of Schaeffer, he was uh, in, in the late 40s, already worked on, on discs uh, by, by, I mean, looping, by scratching, scratching the, the uh, disc to, to create loops, even before, before uh, tape machines. Do, and, do you uh, still work with tape machines? Uh, from time there? to time, yes, it's uh, from time to time, yes. I, 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 you know, in in everything, I love the I was I, what I would call the digital situation where you 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 work with hardwares and and uh, and softwares. So for a long time, I, I, I was going to I was continuing to to work uh, with tape machine until uh, now plugins and and uh, those are so good that it's uh, less it's more and more uh, possible to to work. Uh, with digital uh, instruments and creating the kind of warmth we were all looking for through tape recorders. So it's, it's really ap happening to me, but more by uh, using uh, some uh, uh, recording samplings for, for uh, uh, some sounds existing only on tapes. But I, I'm, I'm less using, I'm, these days I'm less using uh, twin multi-tracks for, for, from scratch. I use basically a, Live Ableton, I, I really, uh, I'm just used to it, and I, I did a lot of tests between uh, the analog tape, between Pro Tools, between Live Ableton, and 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 I must say that uh, the last uh, Live Ableton is very very convincing in terms of quality, and you can do whatever you want. But sometimes, yes, it's still happening to me, but m m less often than before. But don't you think that the simulation of a tape machine is uh, enough to understand the vision for a uh, next generation? You know, we had kids today here from a primary school, uh, second to fifth year of going to school, really quite um, small kids who was making a workshop with iPads, collecting noises in the forest and on the trade show, making a composition out of it. And I always wonder, because I also have kids, about is that okay to start with all this digital stuff or uh, isn't it better to start with a real tape to understand the idea and have the, uh, the thing before you say, okay, I can also simulate it much easier with the modern technique we're using? You know, Andreas, I, I think it's, a, it's not a problem because w w what's important is what you do, is the, the content, is not the machine. I mean, what's what's it? I mean, you could do a uh, crap with uh, tape, tape recorders and 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 very exciting uh, uh, music with uh, with an iPad. You know, so I think uh, uh, you know, uh, it's 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 not necessary to to think that uh, uh, in 2021 we have to go back to the 1940s or 1950s because we we it should be it should be uh, uh, it should be better. Uh, it's it's di it's different. It's different. It's, it's all, all, of course good if uh, some young kid these days they have a culture of uh, or, or history of electronic music, knowing what is where, where it's coming from, and then using using them. But I don't think that uh, it uh, it's uh, what they would do on, with an iPad would be uh, worse or, or better than uh, what we we have done in times with back in time with uh, tape recorders. It's uh, it's you know I, I'm always thinking that. Uh, Technology is dictating styles, but by the end of the day, you have only 12 notes in music, and uh, what makes the difference is yourself. It's not necessarily the tool you're using. Yes, in the end, it counts what you do with it, yeah. And the result counts more than the way to get to it. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, I'm, 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 uh, I want really to, uh, to honor and uh, uh, all these, uh, these people uh, partly in these difficult days economically, I mean, being present in super booth with uh, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic new projects for synthesizers and and uh, and uh, uh, finding ideas. And I would like to uh, 
also to, to share some thoughts I have vis-a-vis -vis and regarding these, these, these people. We should, we should stop considering that when something virtual and when you're using a screen, it should be more or less for free. You know, uh, where, when uh, lots of people are whining and complaining about the fact that for a few euros you can have a, a, a plug-in or a, a virtual synth. They say, ah, oh, it's too expensive. When, when people have spent months to develop all these uh, with very talented engineers, very talented create, creative, create, creators, and, uh, you know, we should stop uh, blaming only GAFA. We should blame ourselves. We should put out the questions to ourselves. Uh, why uh, um, hardware? Uh, we, we are okay to, to pay quite a lot of money for hardware when we are discussing for a few euros uh, to, get, uh, to get a plug-in. It's like if uh, suddenly we were considering that culture and music should be free, like the air we breathe. And it's even it's even worse for, for, for music, for songs, where authors and composers are not respected. And I hope that this, this pandemic moment, when we basically we did two things. We went out uh, uh, from our homes to, to get some food, and then, and then we, we, uh, uh, we, we listened to music, we watched movies, we were reading books. So if we had to prove to ourselves that culture is a, is a, is a basic necessity of human being, because without music, the, this whole, whole moment would have been a total despair, total desert. So please, people, should, they, they should now respect musicians, respect technicians, respect engineers, developers, and pay, and pay for what it is. And it, 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 it's, it's a very important message to, to, uh, uh, to convey uh, in, uh, and in through Superbooth particularly, where, where you have people go, getting to Berlin, trying to get uh, an exposure for the audience, and we, we should respect them, respect their work, and pay for, for the huge value and the huge effort they are making to, uh, to, uh, to push the boundaries of uh, technology. Thank you very much for this wonderful statement. <laughs> I just want to give you an impression about you're in the middle of the auditorium. This is your audience here. Great. So. It's Hello to everybody. It's really great to, uh, to, have, uh, to have you, and it's a big honor to be with you. And, and sorry not being physically with you all, but uh, I'm with you in spirit, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much to Jean-Michel Jean, who was on uh, our Super Booth in this uh, new way. And um, I'm very happy uh, that I can be uh, looking forward to welcome you on board for the Superbooth in May 22 that we will make here. And um, I can only say um, enjoy your time. Perhaps you have time to look what we're doing here, here and there. Course, we can also course, send you a few links afterwards with our recommendations because we try to record as much as we can. We had a yeah, wonderful yeah. evening with your... Uh, with also the French guy Jan Thiersen yesterday, who played live here. And uh, we will have Hacke de Picciotto, they are in the house. That's uh, Mr. Hacke from Einschutz and Neubon and uh, Daniel de Picciotto. Um, and, so please, uh, please Andreas, say, say hello to all, all our friends uh, around, artists and also uh, uh, people, I mean, uh, uh, cre creating so wonderful products. And we are, we are as uh, geeks, we all, um, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm very curious about all the new, new, new projects and new things. I'm, I'm very frustrated not being with you uh, in, uh, uh, I mean, physically. But say hello to uh, everybody. Give my love to everybody around. This is I'll, this is our family. I will do. Thank you very much. And okay. take care. Take care. And talk yes. to you soon. You bye too. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Thank bye -bye. you, Jean Michel. Au okay. revoir. Bye bye. Bye bye. So I think we have another Gesprächskonzert for those who watch online, and uh, then, uh, no, I just hear, see a no. Uh, it's not yet ready cut down, but uh, in this case that we have the Gesprächskonzert, not yet, we don't have another Gesprächskonzert? I would say it's seven o'clock, you know, it was promised we do it from four to...
not four to the floor, four to seven, uh, four till seven. Um, we do this live stream and uh, perhaps this is just over now. What do you say? And uh, we have to prepare for... Huh? Ach so. Okay, wer, wer war das? Wer war dran? Ah, unbedingt. You have to see this. So that's a wonderful finish because I was there when they uh, was preparing this. This is a Gesprächskonzert for um, everybody who's on the stream. This is Mr. Dobro Man. And uh, this is another little piece of um, uh, product uh, presentation with a guitar that I like a lot because we're planning to include the guitar players a bit more to our world as we already did here with a few stands. And next year we are planning the Super Grail for one week and one week later we're doing the Super Booth. And now enjoy your time with Mr. Dobro Man playing, who's that? Playing a wonderful Gesprächskonzert. I say good night and enjoy the day, and we see us tomorrow. Bye bye. Hello, my name is Doberman. We have a presentation here of the company Ploytech with a special unit we want to present to you. It's the Boom Kick, and I'll do a little start song so you can hear what we're doing with this one. Doris picking cotton, them since the midnight blue. His father was killed, Mississippi, never made it up. One day see red play in heaven. Went down to the crossroad, met Jesus on that day. Lord have mercy, by the peace man. One day see you red play in heaven. Play Louisiana. Play Louisiana. This is Doberman, from Berlin, live in Berlin, and we're really happy to be here. Thank you for coming, Doberman. It's a real pleasure and Thank honor. Thank you for inviting me. We want to say also thanks uh, to all the guys from Superbooth, to Andreas and his crew. To uh, It's uh, unbelievable that he made this happen in these times. So um, we, you know, it, it, you think it will happen, but you, you start believing it once you're here. So, um, and it's really exciting to, to see Superbooth taking place. So today at the Ploytech Gesprächskonzert, uh, we would like to show you uh, new and upcoming technology. And uh, there's some history behind it. And uh, Klaus Doppelmann, his real name is Klaus. So we, we first met many years ago, when was that, like in 2004, five, something. And we happened to play in the same band. And uh, I had the honor to do the second keyboard in the band. And uh, so, so my main task was to do arpeggios, drum loops. And I needed some MIDI clock information that's in sync with the drummer behind me. And in order to do this, uh, back in the days, we figured out the 341 pedal. And I only have a picture. Try to show this to you. So this used to be the three for one pedal. And uh, we sold a bunch of those. I think we got like 700 cases. And then it was gone. And uh, uh, the, the special thing about this pedal was that you can, of course, you can take the tempo, but it, you can also shift the phase 
So even if the tempo is correct, it may be that the quarter note is not there where you want it to be. So the, the pedal figures it out and speeds it up and slows it down to always get the quarter notes back in sync. Uh, in sync. And uh, so we made a new pedal later on, which is the one, two pedal. Uh, uh, this, this one, yeah. Yeah, or maybe you take it, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so this is much more foot friendly because the, the, fr the first volume used to be this high and you could feel your feet after tapping for half an hour. And also we got rid of the battery and have USB power. Maybe there's a port on your keyboard so you don't need the power. And uh, so once we talked about it and uh, Doberman found it to be handy if he could sync the stomp box with the clock information. And so we set up a prototype board and uh, Doberman toured with the prototype board for like one year, two years now, two years even. And uh, so, and uh, he was constantly asked like, where can I get this? Uh, where can I buy this? And so we thought about putting it into a guitar pedal. So on, on the one side of the guitar pedal, we have the 341. It's pretty original. And, uh, oh, I have to say this, the 341 idea is you tap like three, four, and then it starts on one. And the one, two is the more German friendly version because we Germans think on the, the, the odd numbers, not on the even numbers. So with the one, two, you go one, two, three, four, and then it starts, so that's why it's one, two. Um, on, on the guitar pedal, we make it assignable, so you can choose if you want to have three, four, or one, two. Yeah, and I... And what you can see here, uh, on, on the left side, there's a mute. So now the, the beat goes on, and the beat is available on the headphone out, but it's muted on the line out. And now if you click mute, then it's green, that means it's back. Red means muted, green means working. And you can see the tempo info on the right side. Okay, I let you do some more music and then... No, no, I, I get back on the sophisticated stuff. Yeah, then no, let's, let's do that later. <laughs> Just show it a little more and I uh, talk a little more and no one will fall asleep. Okay. Okay, I'm going now with the analog, the typical stomp box mode. That means like a typical bass drum, but I want to have the strong bass drum the synthesizer is actually doing. So I have a synthesizer in this box, uh, actually programmed like a nice sounding blues bass drum so you can even change all the ed or edit the bass drum, make your techno bass drum, anything's possible. You can even s uh, use it with a cajon or a percussionist or anybody uh, with an electronic setup because you can use your foot and still do your knob. So it's uh, actually more than a multifunctional instrument, I would say. <laughs> so play uh, like an old blues song, you can hear a synthesized bass drum combined with a dobro, which usually you wouldn't think it's gonna work, but it does. You've got to move. You've got to move. You've got to move, child. You've got to move. So when the You've got to move, you've got to move, you may be high, you may be low, you may be rich child, you may be poor, so when the Lord gets ready, you've got to move, you've got to you may be high, you may 
below. You may be rich, child. You may be poor. So when the Lord and get ready, you've got to. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Klaus. <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah, I, I try the other side. Maybe we have less feedback if I do that, and I hope the cameras can follow. So, uh, it's the next speaker. Okay. <laughs> so, let me mention that everybody here is either vaccinated or tested for COVID, so this is fully safe. We're also, out, it's really nice here. We, we are more or less outside, there's a roof on top and we can see the nice forest. And if you missed Superbooth this year, make sure you come next year. Um, okay, I understood what you wanted me to tell people. So that there's a special mode. So we already talked about green, that means signal audible and red muted. And if the tap is stopped and only if it's stopped, uh, there's also a blue mode. And in blue mode, it's a uh, simple stomp box. So nothing automatic. And uh, the, the point is, there's a lot of digital stomp boxes, and then they let you switch from samples. But in this pedal, there's no sampling used. This is a uh, synthesis. And uh, the, the bass drum synthesizer can do lots of variations. So it's, it's still in the discussion how many parameters it will be at the end. But to give you an idea, so we, we won't use any computer software. You can program it at home, the pedal. And there's everything is based on seven. And uh, the reason for the seven is that we have a so-called RGB LED. That means we have red, green, and blue. And you, you can mix to seven colors by switching red, green, and blue on and off. And if everything switched on, you see it white. And uh, now we thought about, let's say, if we have seven parameters for the bass drum and seven steps, you can change it. You will have a number, that's math, uh, seven by the power of seven. And this will give you 800 or more than 800,000 variations. So. Maybe we will allow even like millions of variations for the bass drum. And this is possible because it's not sampling, it's a synthesizer. And, uh, but don't be afraid, on, on the stage there will be three presets. You can edit at home and you can even restore stuff. If you stand on the knobs for 20 seconds, then you can make a reset if something's weird. And we will ensure that this unit will always work on stage. And we found a metal case. So we understand that this is not for keyboardists, it's for guitar players. So it has to be really, really, um, how do you call it, stable. And, uh, you know, sometimes trucks drive over the stage or some people bring their animals and if there's an elephant stomping on it, you, you want it to still work. And uh, this is what we try to get accomplished. And uh, also another thing I want to mention is that uh, we will build this in Berlin, Germany. And uh, the idea is to help some artists that are good friends of us to get some work over the COVID times. And so we will make sure that this is assembled here and not somewhere else. So. Um, yeah, it, it works like any pedal. So you have a 9-volt typical guitar plug. You can feed through, line in, line out. You have a headphone signal for monitoring that, that's not affected by the mute. And directly into here. Actually, you just need this pedal so you can actually chain it to all your guitar effects or any effects you just... Uh, can plug your instrument in and put it through the chain so it's like a through signal going from here. It's 
sounds still nice. Of course, it's dry. But if you have all your chains behind it, all your effects, so you can use it. So I, p I just had a gig three weeks ago. I had just a little old amplifier with two inputs, one for the microphone, one for my guitar. And I couldn't plug in my old stump box. So I wish I had this plug in like now. So yeah, at the end, uh, this is the guitar cable. And here it mixes, and the volume knob only allows you to change the bass drum volume. So that's too loud, maybe. If I stop it by. And it's also something you need to know. This works like the old 341. So you stop it by holding it for two seconds, then uh, the beat stops. And it's a little bit different on uh, the one, two, because. This doesn't use any knobs, so it needs a double click to stop. And uh, yeah, as a side note, there's also a MIDI out that gives you the MIDI clock information. So if you have a really good looper that can follow MIDI clock, you can sync this to a looper. So be aware there's some loopers that take the tempo in the beginning, but they don't stretch your audio when it changes. So you need a good one that's capable of stretching the audio and you can sync it. But this is just like advanced use. Um, most people won't need any MIDI clock sync. So if you don't know what it is, just ignore it. <laughs> okay, yeah. thanks. And we hear some more of the fantastic music of Doberman. So it's very easy to plug in. You see, just one minute, you can make your sound check. You have a perfect bass drum on any stage. This is Super Boost Blues. The Super Boost Blues. So right now, we play Super Boost Blues. The Super Boost Blues. We have Andreas. The captain's here right now. All right, the super blues. The super blues blues. The super blues blues, yeah. The super blues blues. Thank you much for coming around. This is the super blues blues. So you have the normal stone box. All right, thank you so much. Viel Spaß noch. Have lots of fun on the Super Boost. Thank you, Marcus and Werner, for taking care about this great product. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Hey, okay, the fabulous Doberman and Ploitek, strange sound for me, the Dobro, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. Um, thank you for watching, this is the end of the stream, and we see you tomorrow with lots of Gesprächskonzerte, interviews, and... DIY workshops, and I see you tomorrow. We see you tomorrow. Herr Schneider, Herr is firearmed, and me too. Bye bye.